Hello guys, it's me Simu Orohara and in this video we'll talk about some big changes coming in the new season of the anime. This is how I can title Kobo's recent answers to some of the questions put to him regarding certain events and characters. Finally, Kobo seemed to answer some important questions which has been baffling us for a long time. The most prominent of those questions was about Sokin Ishida. I have already talked about Sokin Ishida in this video and I highlighted the depth of this character in the story of the Quincy because I considered him to be the main reason for Yuhabach's defeat as well as the central character that connects the hidden Vinyl Reich with the Quincy of the real world. And regarding this topic, one of the fans asked Kobo about Sokin Ishida and the question was, is the reason for Yuru not getting affected by Ausvan related to his grandfather? Kobo replied, the development behind this plot point is a little complicated, but there is a chance it may get revealed in the anime version of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, depends on how they approach it. Now as you can see, it appears from Kobo's answer, the issue of Yoyo surviving from the Ausvern is not uh, an ordinary thing, rather it's a complex plot and it is certain that several events and characters played a major role in it. And obviously, Sokin is one of them, as long as he is the character who came up with the theory of the arrow that can cancel all the abilities of Yuhabach. The good thing about this is that Kobo did not forget this aspect and it seems that he has provided the anime with the necessary uh, information on this subject and if everything went well, we'll definitely see some information about Sokin. Maybe his past when he was a writer inside the Vandalreich as well how Yuri survived the Auswell. And in the same context of events that could be added, Kobo was asked about the identity of the Shirnaiter who attacked Rokia in the first invasion. If you remember, we were all wondering who attacked Rokia and with whom she was fighting in the first place. Kobo replies that the identity of the Shirnaiter who was fighting Rokia will be revealed in the anime. And this is a very good thing because the first invasion knew a big blackout around the Shirnaiter and most of the fights were behind the screen. Therefore, it's likely that some of the fights that we did not see in the manga during the first invasion, we may see them in the anime. For example, I tried to find out who faced Okitaki in the first invasion and I didn't even know what this Shirnaiter looked like. He appeared in this scene. I mean, even his hairstyle is not the hairstyle of any of the Shirnaiters that we know. Therefore, seeing the first invasion with a broader view would be a very good thing. And we move to one of the questions that is no less important than the previous ones. It is a question about the novels that follow the manga. Here this fan asks Kobo about the possibility of adapting these novels into anime. Kobo in his answer did not give a definite answer about adapting novels into anime episodes, but he did not deny this. Rather, he said that it's if there is enough material, the novels may be adapted into anime. And I personally have talked about this topic. I said if the studio will remain Piero and the anime has a good start in terms of views etc, surely many events will be out of mystery like the flashbacks of some Shirnaiter and like what they did with Naruto, it will be the same with Bleach, I mean they will adapt all the novels that came after the end of the manga. For example, after the end of the events of chapter 684, the studio may adapt the events of the novel can't fear your own war, which takes place uh, six months after the end of the of the war between the Quincy and the Shinigami, and then adapt the events of the novel We Do Not Love You, which takes place three years later. The anime will cover all the topics of the final arc, and who knows, it may move to adapt the, the Hell arc if Kobo returns to it in a separate season. In the end guys, even Kobo's answers contained an important point, that these additional things are up to how the anime will do in terms of success. If things went well and that's what we hope for, the anime will literally adapt everything. And the success of the anime will be a major factor in seeing the final arc with a different flavor from what we saw in the manga. So guys, what do you think about Kobo's answers? Tell me in the comments and see you guys in my next video.